Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Bob Gendler, Dan Brodjeski, and Alan Golbig. Thank you for presenting today. Uh, please go ahead and share your slides and we will get started. All right. Uh, can everyone hear me and see my screen? Bob, Dan? Yeah, good. good. All right, cool. Hi, uh, so I'm Alan Goldbig, uh, along with uh, Bob Gendler and Dan Brojeski. Uh, today we are going to talk about the Mac OS Security Compliance Project. Uh, we released this on June 19th of this year. Uh, and we've had a lot of questions asked and we wanted to share this with the Mac admin community, go over the background of why we did it, go over some of the, the files in the project, uh, do a demo and talk a little bit more about the future. So when it comes to Mac OS compliance, every release sort of feels like Groundhog's Day. You know, it's the same circle, same thing over and over again. With it. And it's a yearly process. As everybody knows, Apple releases a new operating system in the fall. You have to wait for guidance from a respected organization. Every organization basically internally has to roll their own security configuration. This delays rolling out the new operating system. This delays being able to issue new hardware. And compliance reporting products are delayed because organizations, uh, third parties have to support the uh, compliance guidelines that haven't been released yet. So everything kind of just takes forever and is just this, this same process over and over again. It's very slow. So like I said, current release, uh, currently the OS is released in the fall. And then guidance for the previous o OS is released usually around the same time, maybe a little before, maybe a little after. So when 10.15 came out, the 10.14 guidance had just been released. And usually with the new operating system comes new hardware that can't be downgraded. So this leaves us with a conundrum. What can we do with our new hardware, with our new operating system, but the previous year's got security guidelines? So now what? The Mac OS Security Compliance Project, we've created this to hopefully solve this problem. Uh, it's a joint effort between NIST, NASA, DISA, Los Alamos Labs, and a whole handful of people. Uh, it's hosted on the US NIST Gov GitHub account. We've mapped around 150-ish settings within the operating system to NIST 853 revision four controls. The project, uh, because it's on, on GitHub, uh, is an open source project to create and generate security baselines quicker and in a more agile way than pre the previous process has been. Since every organization has had to do this, we figured why not do this out in the open and collaboratively. Each agency and everyone who contributes brings something to the table, so in the end we'll have a better, more secure, more robust based security baseline. And since the whole process is open source and GitHub, anyone and we really stress that anyone can contribute and submit pull requests or issues within the project. So our goal is for security baselines to be produced and published shortly after the re release of the operating system. That way organizations can quickly officially support the new operating system and new hardware and hopefully for third party vendors to support the compliance reporting quickly on that newer operating system. And there's a number of industries that have their own checklists and guidance that are based off of the NIST 853 controls, such as DISA and FINRA, and you might be in some of these regulated industries. Our goal is to not create all of these baselines, but it's to create a modular solution to streamline the creation of those different guidances. And even if you don't work in government or regulated industry, this can be used for anyone looking to secure machines and have all the pieces easily created for them. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dan to talk more about the guts of the project. So I'm going to go over some of the components of the of the project. Um, the foundation of the project is rooted in YAML, um, as we lovingly refer to as the YAMS. Um, we chose to use YAML as the structure because it's easily it's easy to read and understand. 
as well as when you're going to customize it, it's easy to to figure out where you need to make the changes for for the settings that you would want to apply in your organization. Uh, the Python scripts that we've created it can easily um, process the YAML and generate the guidance in the files that, the, that this project produces. So we're going to take a look at one of the example rules that we have. Uh, the, the rule file um, you can see is, is descriptive. We try to name it so, it, so the files um, are easily understood what, what is contained within, um, and they are again uh, YAML files. You can see here um, the structure of our of our YAML rule file um, has uh, the ID which matches the file name again trying to be descriptive and so so it's easily understood what's what's in here as uh, then the title and discussion both elaborate more of what the rules purpose is uh, with the discussion we uh, we try to outline in, in a number of cases how it ties back to the 853 controls that it references so we can explain why we are doing this configuration and, and what is the what is the uh, requirement it's trying to achieve. We have the check result and fix fields. Um, these are primarily used to to indicate what the, the check command to check for compliance and how you how do you check the system to see if it is in fact meeting the requirement. Um, the fix contains either the code or the method on how the fix is applied so that um, the script that generates the documents reads these and generates the compliance script on the fly. Uh, we have uh, additional metadata uh, for referencing um, other publications. Um, we have some references back to the DISA STIG, the 853 documents um, and some additional um, references can be added here if they are tied back to other publications. We also include a Mac OS, which version of Mac OS this rule is supported on. Um, we will include um, all applicable OSs going forward, and if a rule does not work on that OS, it won't be included in the Mac OS field. The um, tags um, we are primarily used for keyword, which, which baseline the uh, rule is applied to. So you can see in this example, we have it on the baselines for the CNSSI 1253, the FISMA moderate, the FISMA high, as well as the DISA STIG. And then below that, we have the mobile config information. This here um, identifies what payloads and values are needed in the configuration profiles that either an MDM or, or um, loading them manually is required to achieve the setting. Uh, the script uses these fields to then generate the mobile config files on the fly as well. So whichever rules you select that contain mobile config settings will generate the mobile config files that you can use to apply to your workstation. We'll take a look here at, at the baseline file structure. Um, here we have created a um, specific baseline for the Mac admins um, presentation here. Uh, we've created a number of baselines as part of the project to cover the FISMA 853 low, moderate, and high baselines, as well as the CNSSI 1253 baseline. Um, and then we're going to show you how the uh, how this project can be used to create a custom baseline. And this is what we did here for the Mac admins. Looking at the baseline YAML file, it has uh, a number of fields, including uh, the title and description of the baseline, um, which outlines what what this baseline is for and and, and gives ad additional information. And this can be um, customized for your your organization. Uh, the guidance is also broken down into sections, and you can uh, identify which sections you want to include in your guidance, as well as the rules that you want to be included in those sections. Those are identified by the, the rule ID. You'll note that it does not include the YAML file, the YAML extension. Uh, the ability to customize the settings and guidance to match your organization's defined values um, is uh, supported by this project as well. It's uh, an important piece of this to tailor the, um, the rules and the guidance that you would want to apply in your, your organization. Um, 
these overrides when you're changing these values do take priority. So if you if you change a screensaver setting, um, it will not reflect the, the, the default values. It'll reflect the values you provide. Uh, one thing to note is when you're customizing the rules, uh, the file names must remain the same when you copy them to the custom folder because it does reference the ID and the and the YAML file. Uh, so they, they need to remain consistent. We will have um, more to come in the future. We want to add additional features um, for customization. We want to be able to customize some of the templates, some of the author pages, the forwarding, um, any other sections within the guidance that you would like to add. We want to have the ability to, to customize that even further. And so we take a look at uh, the rule file and you can see we're changing the values for the screensaver timeout. Um, you can see the original value is was 15 minutes of inactivity. Uh, we're changing them here to, to 10 minutes and we change all the values throughout the YAML where it's, where it's required. So if the, if the values um, in, in the in the title, in the check, in, in the mobile config settings, you want to make sure you change all the values accordingly so that they all match up to your organization settings. And this brings us to our Python script. Um, we, we created a, uh, one Python script that will process all the YAML files and the baselines to generate the documents as part of the guidance. We, uh, if you're familiar with the project, when we released it in the pre-release, we had a number of scripts that performed these actions, but we decided that it, it would be more easy, ease of use to have one script that you can pass arguments to and, and, and tell it to perform specific actions rather than have the how to use all these different scripts. So we, we look at the, the script help here. You can see that the um, required arguments, the only one that is required is the baseline file. So you have to provide uh, a YAML file that contains the baseline that you want to process. And then the additional arguments here, you can, you can supply a logo um, if you want to have a custom branding on your guidance, as well as if you want to generate the profiles, generate the script, or even generate an Excel document. And if you choose uh, uh, all those options, you will get um, the following output files. Uh, you'll get the mobile config files. You'll get a conf uh, compliance script. Uh, the script will do both a compliance check and give you the option to fix the, the rules that, that are failed, that don't pass compliance checks, so you can remediate the the, the setting if you would wish. It includes an ASCII doc. This ASCII doc is then used to generate the HTML files and the PDF files that you uh, you can distribute amongst your organization as you see fit. Uh, we we also include the functionality to to output an Excel file for all you uh, spreadsheet fans. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alan and he's going to give you a little demo of how to make a custom uh, baseline. Excellent. Uh, so as Dan said, uh, the generate script will create all that you see on the screen. So you get your compliance script, your ADOC, your HTML and PDF, your Excel spreadsheet, as well as the mobile config files. So how do we all do this? So the first thing we're going to do is re take a look at the uh, OS screensaver timeout YAML and see the fields that we want to change. So we have a title, discussion, the check, and the uh, mobile config. So we first copy that file over to the custom rules folder, and then we're going to want to go and edit it. I speak faster than I type. And so we are going to modify 15 minutes to 10 minutes. We're going to also add a little blurb at the end so we can see that in the documentation. So we add because Bob says so. And we will edit the idle time to 600 seconds and we will go down below and also modify that to 600 seconds. So when the mobile config is created, the idle time will then show the proper settings. Uh, I was given some branding, uh, so I'm going to copy that from my desktop so that we can add to our guide uh, something that's more custom to this guidance. Um, and then let's run the script. So we're going to run the script from the base of the project. 
we are gonna choose the baseline of our choice. Uh, for right now, we're gonna do 853 Mac admins. We are going to uh, do a profile script, Excel, and do the custom logo. And then once we hit enter, uh, we get feedback on everything that is created. So you will see that it does see the custom setting for the screensaver timeout. We have the four configuration profiles. We have a little caution warning about smart cards uh, and that the script, the Excel spreadsheet, and uh, the HTML and PDF are created. And if we dig into the build folder, uh, you will see everything is there. And if we go one further into the mobile configs, you'll see the files are all within there. So let's go over the compliance checker real quick. So this is really designed uh, for when you want to start testing this in your environment. Uh, we don't really recommend using this as a production tool just to use on your machines within your organization. Uh, so let's first install some profiles. We're going to grab that uh, 10 minute screensaver profile and we're going to install it. And then we're going to grab another one just to meet compliance. And once those are installed, we're then going to run the compliance checker. You must call this with sudo as it does require a root. All right, so as you see, it says last compliance scan is no scans have been run. Every time you run it, that will update. So let's run our first scan. Click two. And you'll see that I failed uh, sysprefs firewall enable. So let's remediate that. Hit enter. Uh, actually, first, let's uh, look at the compliance report to see where we're at right now. So it shows numbers test passed, failed, and we see that I'm 83% compliant. Uh, so let's run the commands to remediate. So we have a little warning banner. Let's click yes. And then it will ask you for each change if you want to do it. So we're going to say yes to turning on the uh, set global state for the socket filter firewall. And so it's been set. So let's run our compliance scan again, and you'll see that we passed everything. Uh, you'll also notice that last compliance scan up above has been updated to show the recent time. Let's run that report, and there you go. We're now 100% compliant. So this is a good way to. Uh, to make sure that all your settings are being applied before you roll this out to your fleet. Uh, as well, uh, we do write to a preference file in library preferences org dot whatever your uh, baseline is called dot audit up list, and this will give you uh, some fields to pull apart. So if you did have a smaller group that you wanted to use this on, you could use this for extension attributes or any other kind of field. So uh, internally at NASA, we use ASCII doc for all of our documentation in my group. Uh, and then this allows us to uh, create HTML and PDF guides. Uh, we post our HTML guides on our internal website and then PDFs are used for digital to, to apply digital signatures so that uh, we can then say, hey, these are the settings you need to apply to your settings for this application. Uh, and here's an example of an HTML guide. So you can see it use the uh, custom banner. And it, we scroll down and it used the title. You'll see in the table of contents, there's all the settings and we even have the enforced screensaver timeout with 10 minutes of inactivity. And it shows the proper settings. It even has that little adding of because Bob says so. The check has the right time. The remediation has the correct information. And we even pull in uh, some of the fields from the YAML. So you can see where we take the YAML and pull it into the documentation. Uh, we have the ID and we have all the references. For those of you who love spreadsheets, and it was told to us many do, uh, we also provide uh, a spreadsheet guide and you can see it even pulls in the uh, custom settings for that organization. And here's an example of a configuration profile that is generated by the script. Um, 
We have over 70 configuration profile settings. So I don't remember the number of actual profiles that gets generated, but if say there are multiple for say com.apple.screensaver, all of those would then be in uh, the configuration profile. Uh, and then you can then test on your systems. Uh, we do, if your MDM does provide uh, these preference, these configuration profiles, you should probably use them within. Uh, this is a lot more for testing. All right, so future, uh, where are we going with this project? Uh, we are hoping uh, for more third party support. A really cool thing that happened when we first launched this, this first night was uh, Mac DevOps uh, YVR. Uh, the hackathon night and uh, they presented this project and came up with ways of tinkering with it. Uh, there is a pr product called a uh, project called Masher, which is a swift command line interface tool that ingests the YAML. Uh, we're hoping to expand upon that in the future. Um, there was a monkey report module that was created um, and uh, uh, one commercial third party that we know there's doing something so far uh, Command Reporter just announced the other day that they are uh, going to use these security baselines to do testing. So uh, you'll be able to, if you use this and you have Command Reporter, you'll be able to actually uh, report and have that information pulled into, uh, say, Splunk or wherever else you put your logs. Um, if you want to learn more about that, I recommend going to the Command Reporter Mac Admin channel, uh, and they, I'm sure they'll be happy to speak with you about it. Um, we're also looking to uh, add additional security frameworks, such as NIST 800-171. Uh, there are plenty that we uh, are hoping that, since this is open source, that we can get help on getting others out there. We are leveraging uh, the project YAML files to generate uh, what's called the USGCB, United States Government Configuration Baseline. And there's two required files, uh, OVAL and uh, SCAP. So we are uh, going forward with that. As Dan said earlier, uh, we have more customization options uh, so that you can create more uh, customized guides, uh, more author, adding, like say the author field, uh, more forwards. And if you have any other information you wanna add in that makes it more general to your organization as opposed to using our guidance. Uh, and most importantly, uh, we were hoping that macOS Big Sur would be public beta by now, but uh, we got the blessing that once it is, we can publish a Big Sur branch in our uh, repo. So once that happens, we're hoping that since this is an open source uh, project, we're hoping that that you, you all help us in getting that ready for Big Sur. Uh, we already started working on it since beta one uh, and we started fi filing feedback um, and yeah. So uh, Bob, Dan, and I are uh, one of uh, many who worked on this project, and we want to give thanks to them. Uh, it's been a very long time. I don't remember when we started this. I, Bob, do you remember? We started uh, working on it in August of last year, and then went public, like you said, uh, uh, June 19th or so. So it's yeah. been it was nine months before it saw the light of day. Yeah. So it's been it's been a long time. It's we've had like basically every Thursday we have meetings and nonstop daily meetings. Uh, and yeah, so that's it. Uh, here's just a link to the repo if you haven't been to it. And that's that's it. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, we do have a few a few Q and A questions here. <clears throat> so I'll start reading some of those off. Um, what what if a rules check or fix are different for different versions of Mac OS? Uh, so I guess I'll I'll tackle that. Uh, so you know, luckily so far in Big Sur that hasn't happened. Um, so we're able to just sort of have them as as is. Uh, one of the things that's sort of very similar uh, and related to that is for uh, Big Sur, we'll have to get different CCEs issued to us from NIST. And so we've probably toyed with the idea there will be a branch per um, operating system uh, version. So you'll have your Catalina branch, you'll have your Big Sur branch, and that's how we'll handle 
having uh, if the, the check or, or, or fix changes because that you know Apple will probably hopefully fingers crossed implement some more configuration profiles. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, this kind of, that kind of leads into the next question. I think uh, the the OS screensaver timeouts is a Mac OS 10.15 field. Uh, will it be applicable to older Mac OS versions too? Maybe perhaps it sounds like these things are kind of branch per version. So we as made a decision when we started this project that we were going to focus on 10.15 and forward. But okay. that doesn't mean you can't create a 1014 guide. You can certainly go through. Uh, you could do overrides for each rule if you wanted to and throw in the 1014 tag and then create your own baseline. So it really doesn't matter. You can do you can go back to 1013 if you choose. Uh, and, but and we we made we made the decision to start with 1015 and go forward. And I've actually had to issue this and, and lay it down on a 1014 and the majority of things work. Uh, you know, and I think the major place that Apple changed things was iCloud and Apple ID. So a lot of the settings do basically just work the same. Okay, great. Um, Dan, I think this is a question for you. Are there any beard hacks to grow a rad beard like yours? It's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's any hacks. I mean, just I get lucky in the gene pool, I think. Um, and then constant daily care. It's, it's, it's actually turned into more work than than shaving daily so um no just shampoo it wash it oil it up perhaps we can branch out and have a presentation on that some week <laughs> um another question the big sur profiles command loses the ability to install from the command line um, mm -hmm. would, these, would these profiles be usable to upload uh, to your mdm of choice sure it would uh we would recommend signing them if you do but again, as I said, uh, a lot of these are already in your MDM. So if you can map them to what's in your MDM, that would be preferred. A lot of what we generate is for testing to make sure that everything can be set properly on your systems, but you could certainly uh, sign them and then upload them. There's no reason why. Okay. Uh, how might one uh, integrate this with monkey reports? look at the monkey report project uh that i can find the link and share it uh but yeah they already started that first night they started and they started ingesting the yaml and bringing it in uh, okay great which compliance standards are currently in the project disa fisma uh and will there more be added Right now, we're supporting. Uh, we we started with the 853, so it's it's a FISMA uh, baseline. Um, uh, originally, we actually even just called this like a macOS FISMA project. But uh, we we love to support more of them. Um, you know, we don't have 1015 uh, uh, tags for the um, for the DISA STIG because they don't exist yet. Uh, publicly so you know we'll slap those in when we can uh for example uh so uh or people can submit uh, uh issues and, and pull requests to help uh, uh support more of the different compliance frameworks out there there i'll, I'll just follow up with that um uh, in the github project in the issues there's there's already been a couple requests for additional baselines to be generated um if i recall right um, one of them was Australian government, some baseline, and there was another one. So um, if there's other, if there are other baselines that would like to be, you know, leveraged and included in this project, we, we would urge folks to submit issues and we can investigate them or work with folks that can help contribute to those, um, those requests. Okay, let's see. Um, you said not to use the compliance script in production. What do you rec recommend using in production? I'm not sure who's, who's, who said that actually. So I'll, I'll follow up. <laughs> Alan mentioned that the, so the script that is generated, um, 
so it can only re it can only fix things that use a command to fix it. So a number of them are, are fixed by config profiles and a number of them, some of them are even you have to manually fix them. So as far as the reporting part of it, you probably could and have it run the compliance scan in production and pr produce just the the reporting part of it. I think the remediation part of it would be something that you wouldn't want to have in production and have it automatically set things from the script. I think you would maybe want to have um, other tools to perform the same operations, maybe a Jamf policy or whatever um, management tool you have in your organization to set those. But I think you could use the compliance scan component of it as a as a as a um, production tool because all it is is reading values and reporting the the status. And, and uh, to add into that, you know, uh, with that compliance uh, script that we've wrote, you manually have to hit yes, I want to fix each thing. So it's not really useful in a uh, enterprise environment. OK. You don't just pipe Y to it. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's not well, what you Yeah, and again, we, we just want to stress the testing environment of it because, you know, if if the script if the script breaks something, we don't we don't want to be held responsible for it. <laughs> and, and, you know, if you're locking your systems to an 853 uh, baseline, uh, there's smart card requirements in there. So if you don't have a smart card and you're just blindly hitting yes or you or you or pass through the yes, you've now locked yourself out 100 percent of your machine. So that that's another reason why we don't really make sure that you're not just blindly applying settings. OK. Very good. Um, will there be a baseline created for the GLBA Graham Leach Beely Act? Do you know anybody who we could work with? Does anyone yeah, know what the GLBA is? <laughs> it's uh, something in, in the UK. I just recently learned a little bit about it. So, but I mean, again, we're hoping to have community support and, mm -hmm. and interest to help create these kind of things because. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot even just to do the 853. Um, yeah. And I mean, like if you have, uh, if you reach out to somebody there, you can tell them to look at this. We will certainly talk with them uh, to introduce ourselves and the project to them. If you have a MDM that you want to kind of tie into this somehow or some kind of compliance checker, uh, anything, configuration management tool, anything. Uh, we are happy to talk with them and introduce them to the project if if you find that this is useful for your environment. And, and if, I, I think I'll just, oh, sorry, Bob. Uh, I was, I was gonna just going to easily uh, <laughs> uh, maps to the 853. You know, maybe we can look into doing it. Uh, uh, internationals don't necessarily match up to um, what the US uh, security is. Well, and, and the other the kind of core of our project, the idea was to make this modular and easy for folks to, to leverage. So we're trying to make a uh, make it so that you can use the, the library of rules and and the processes that we have in place to make make a baseline and we're trying to make it so it's very simple. Um, and so we'll definitely you know, work with folks that have these requests, but also um, we're hoping that it's it's an easy enough to use tool that folks can run with it as they as they will. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's so, submit a submit a enhancement pull request. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and we've accepted a few that have come through even right after we had uh, we, we had launched it. You know, a couple people had some fixes and stuff, so uh, we're all we're all open for it. Good, good, OK. Um, what are the client system requirements, uh, e.g. the rumored Python appreciation? Uh, so uh, the scripts are written in Python 3. Uh, so we include the requirement file for that. We don't uh, include how to install Python 3. There are multiple ways to do so. There's relocatable Python. There's uh, the new Mac admins Python 3 project. Uh, so, and we also have uh, a few Ruby gem files because uh, ASCII doc uses Ruby. So we also have a gem file requirement and all that is 
if not in our wiki, will be. We are we had, when we released, we did a 0.9. Uh, the 1.0 will have uh, including the script being a single script instead of like four or five scripts. Uh, we'll also include more of like the requirement files and the wiki will have more information. Okay, and, and the, comp the compliance script itself is a, a Z shell script, so we've we're trying to think forward as as Apple transitions to Z shell. Um, so we're hoping that the outputted compliance script will remain relevant. OK, great. Um, is is there any consideration to switching to CF preferences for checking the settings uh, so that you might pick up uh, a change that a user has made themselves to become compliant? So a lot of the uh, the settings that you could check with the, uh, our configuration profile. So we, we wanted to do this in sort of a scriptable method. Um, and as far as I know, there's no CF prefs like scriptable way. Uh, you could write some Python and import some, uh, Pi Objective C and all that kind of stuff or create a Swift application. But all that information is really uh, for the mobile configs. You can easily and, and Masher actually does that. I, I, uh, it reads from the, the preference daemon um, for the config profiles. Um, yeah, that's kind of, uh, we just wanted it to be a scriptable, easy to, to go method for anybody. And, and as I was saying, that with all of those being configuration profiles, they should, in air quotes, uh, not be changeable by the user, although we found that there are a handful that a user can change and, um, and uh, a handful that get uh, relaunch uh, or reset when the preferences uh, daemon basically gets relaunched. Okay. Mm -hmm. Could this replace the CIS cat assessment tool? Um, so I've played with the syscat and it does different things. Um, I, I wouldn't say it would replace it because we're not checking CIS compliance. Um, and so uh, if CIS is the thing that you have to do, then CIS is what you got to do. Um, I wouldn't say it could replace, maybe it could supplement, maybe, uh, but uh, if, if you're checking against our baselines, you could definitely use um, the scripts that are provided, or you know, if Jamf or uh, Monkey um, builds in some support for it, then uh, you could use just right there. And you could create extension attributes really easily based off of what we have in the, in the checks. Okay. Uh, has there been any uh, consideration or thought about working with the CIS maintainers on this project? They haven't reached out, I'm assuming. No. No, we haven't heard anything. Um, you know, we're more than happy to work with anybody who reaches out. Yep. Uh, I, I'll say we've we've talked to, to Jissa a little bit, so it's like anybody who does blind stuff, this. Um, this this couldn't be happy to work with. OK, great. Um, what ASCII doc application do you use? This is one of the things that hung me up when I first downloaded the project and started working on it. So ASCII doc is a language uh, for writing documents and books. Uh, I just use Visual Studio Code and I install the ASCII doc extensions. Um, I'll put some links in our wiki for more information, but there are a lot of good websites. The, just the ASCIIDoc.org, I believe, uh, off the top of my head, um, will teach you kind of like the breakdown of how to build out guides. But yeah, just Visual Studio Code with a bunch of extensions. ASCII and then, is the big thing. And then, yeah, and then ASCII Doctor is what allows you to, there's ASCII Doctor and ASCII Doctor PDF, which allows you to convert to HTML and PDF. Uh, and like I said, those are Ruby gems that need to be installed. Okay, C can you talk about what the Masher project is or script that's referenced? It was a project by Joel Rennick uh, that he was kind of playing around with the YAML the first night when this came out. Uh, so it is a Swift uh, command line utility that just ingests the YAML. Uh, I think we our plan was going forward is to possibly take what he wrote and go beyond that so that we can do more of the compliance checking and remediating with a Swift GUI. 
uh, as opposed to the bash uh, script. I think I'm speaking about that correctly, right? Okay. That's, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and if you wanted to, you know, it, it, it hasn't been touched since the, that hackathon night, but it's on, on Joel's uh, um, GitLab, so gitlab.com slash uh, uh, MacTroll, um, and you'll find Masher. Uh, you know, definitely don't use that for your compliance reporting or anything, but it's an example of how you can ingest the YAML uh, in Swift easily. Okay, cool. All right, well, that was uh, the end of our current questions. Um, I usually give it a second to see if there's any other further questions while I just uh, say thank you again to everyone for taking the time today to, to, to present our first uh, presentation.